When you're confronted with a stressful or scary situation, that's when the sympathetic nervous system kicks in. Think of this like your fight or flight system. It revs you up, gets you ready for action. Your body will respond with things like an increased heart rate, faster breathing, and opening up your pupils. Now, in modern times, there's no dinosaurs or tigers, generally speaking, that are gonna jump out at us. So the things that we deal with on a regular basis could be something like getting cut off when you're driving, right? When that happens, what happens? Your heartbeat revs up, you start to breathe really fast, and that anger kicks in. This is what's called a sympathetic dominant state. On the flip side, the parasympathetic nervous system is your cool down, rest and relax, rest and digest system. You can't be amped up all the time. So you need a balance when you come up to help bring you down. And that's where the parasympathetic nervous system kicks in. When you're in a state of parasympathetic dominance, we call this your rest, repair, and digest mode. This is where your brain optimally functions to help encode memory. This is where your body repairs from injuries that it's had throughout the day. And this is where your body actually is able to digest food appropriately to get you the energy you need to start your next day. Generally, HRV is measured in milliseconds. And how do we measure it? Well, luckily we have a bunch of tools available to us. They're ring type devices, wristband type devices, or even smartwatches that are able to calculate this for us on a regular basis. Once upon a time, this used to be something that we could only measure in the research lab because we had to keep patients in a hospital for a 24 hour period to monitor their heart. A high HRV is generally considered a marker of good health. It suggests a couple of things. You could either be very low stressed or, or dealing with your stress on a regular basis, getting great sleep, or have excellent cardiovascular fitness. A low HRV, conversely, suggests that you may be very stressed out, you might not be resting enough. If you're athletic, you may be overtraining, or it could suggest chronic inflammatory conditions like infections or even sometimes different types of cancers. But there's more. High HRV has actually been been associated with better recovery from illnesses like COVID-19. The more rested and resilient your body is, the faster it can deal with the inflammation and the different infections. When it comes to tracking HRV, you can't really compare your number to somebody that you know, like a partner or a buddy. HRV is individual and depends on so many different factors. Things like your sleep, your stress level, your caffeination, your alcohol use can all come to play when it comes to heart rate variability. So Rather than zoning in on one or two measurements, what you want to do is look at your trend and to see as you're eating better, as you're exercising more, as you're sleeping better, is your heart rate variability improving as it should? If not, you might need to get deeper into your relaxation, deeper into meditation, or try to optimize your sleep. Something really cool is that recent research has suggested that HRV can actually be a tool that's used to help evaluate people who are at risk for cognitive issues like dementia. The research suggests that people who have a higher heart rate variability are actually at a lower risk of developing dementia later on in age. So if you note that your HRV is consistently low, now is the time to jump on it and do what you can to increase your HRV. So doc, thanks for this information, but what do I do with this? How do I raise my own heart rate variability? And it's amazing how just a couple of lifestyle and dietary choices can make a huge difference. Simple practices like meditation, deep breathing, engaging in social events, and eating a whole food, primarily plant-based diet with lean proteins has actually been shown to increase your HRV. When we talk about breath work, something as simple as box breathing, where you take a deep breath in for four beats, hold for four beats, breathe out for four beats, and hold for four beats can engage that parasympathetic nervous system, engaging that rest and relax portion of your brain, and bringing that stress level down to increase your heart rate variability. Remember, heart rate variability is scored more like basketball, not like golf. So a higher number is better than a lower number. And if as you're tracking your HRV, you're seeing a trend line go up, that's awesome. That means that the changes that you're making are actually bearing fruit, having an effect on your heart rate variability. And let's not just worry about meditation, but Leap can also help optimize your heart rate variability. We want to aim for seven to nine hours of deep, restful, restorative sleep. And if you're not sure if that's what you're getting, remarkably, the same devices that you're using to measure your heart rate variability should also be able to give you insight into your sleep. A sleep-friendly environment can help you get access into that deep, restful sleep. You want to try to have a calm, dark, cool room to sleep in where you feel safe. 
optimal temperature for sleep has actually been measured around 68 to 70 degrees. And as I mentioned before, your diet can actually help you optimize heart rate variability. Stay away from ultra processed foods. Try to avoid caffeine late at night and definitely try to avoid alcohol late at night. Sticking to a primarily plant-based whole food diet with tons of fruits and veggies and lean proteins can help optimize your heart rate variability. And of course, let's not forget about stress management. In today's world, it is so important to help optimize your stress. Look, I'm not saying avoid stress because that's part of just being a grown up. But what you want to do is not take that on inside yourself. Do things like deep breathing, meditation, take a walk, get outside. For me, I like to hit the gym and lift heavy things. Whatever works for you that helps you really burn off that stressful energy, leave it at work. And when you come home, you can be more present for your family and optimize your heart rate variability. So understanding and monitoring your heart rate variability is like tuning in to a radio station that listens to your body. By monitoring your heart rate variability and seeing how different behaviors, different foods, and different lifestyle choices can optimize your HRV, you get better insight into how your body works, which is really what I want for everybody who's watching this video. We hope you enjoyed today's video and please make sure to like and subscribe for more videos on health and wellness and to learn about the cutting edge of root cause medicine.